Okay. Hello, everyone. There we go. Now we also have the recording. Hope everyone's doing amazing. Been a while since uh, I've seen some of you uh, on coaching calls. But yeah, let me just share my screen. Let me just jump straight into the process and, uh, and what we're doing on IG. Can everybody see my screen now? All right. That's amazing. So just, um, just as a quick intro here, I just hope you guys have more context. What we're doing over on IG is, is slightly different than what happens on Facebook and in the, in the dynamics on Facebook, just because usually with Facebook, we attract a more sophisticated market and we have uh, lower limits overall. IG it just tends to be a little bit less restrictive. And what that allows us to do is just play a numbers game. And by default, when we play a numbers game, the one that pushes the most volume is going to get the most results. So that being said, we have a very straightforward deployment setting process in place where once again, like the goal is just to push as, to, to push as much volume as we can in the most efficient way possible. Well, of course, it's like making sure we, we don't get banned by IG because we've been through that. We don't want you guys to go through it. Right. And in the end, as the end, end, end result of this, um, we can hit 20, 40 bookings per day, just from one setter alone, just like we have here. Yesterday, we've got 20 bookings from one setter. The day before, same setter, 38 qualified calls. And I'm just going to be sharing with you the exact setting framework, the exact daily workflow, the KPIs that we're aiming for, and also the, the management SOP, because that's also important, just to make sure that you keep the setters accountable, you show up as a leader, you give them feedback, and everything's just like streamlined with, with the whole process, right? And once again... Um, before we dive into the framework, this works incredibly well with running shout outs and getting a constant stream of inbound leads coming your way. And the key word here is efficiency. You're going to see the process here is very, very efficient. It's a very short process. We don't take the leads through a lot of questions and we don't want to do a lot of leverage building. We just want to like slightly get their interest, get them to commit, like slowly commit. And then we just push for the call. We put them on a triage call. So that being said, I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to pause for a second or two just so you guys can take a look at this. All right. And now I'm going to break down how everything works. We have the scripts. And first off, once again, uh, we have inbound lead that's reaching out. The first thing that we want to get a hold of, the first thing that we want to understand in the inbox is current situation awareness, uh, awareness sorry, meaning where they live, right? Because based on that, uh, we're going to know whether we're going to move on and explain what the opportunity is about, or we're going to go with the qualification process if it's a third world country or if there are some red flags, right? So the way it works is very simple, very straightforward. You have an inbound lead that's reaching out, uh, like, hey, name, happy to share more about this opportunity and explore how and if we might be able to help. Just so I have context, where do you currently live? And then prospect says US, right? So we, we now have the awareness. We now know where they live. Got you. That's awesome. Are you already familiar with how appointment setting works and what it entails? Or would you like me to break down the general concept of it? And in, in this scenario here, like 99.9% .9 of people, they're going to say like, yeah, I'd love more info. Can you please give me the breakdown? And then we just explain it, right? And we have um, uh, quite a bit of text here with an explanation. It's very, very straightforward. Well, essentially, an appointment setter works within an online coaching business as the person that takes care, that takes care of that business owner's inbox. And this business owner sells products and services between 5,000 and 50,000 USD. You're just going to exchange messages on Facebook and Instagram on a daily basis under the name of successful business owners on their profile. <clears throat> and your goal would be to book people in for a sales call. Then if a person that you booked in for a call becomes a client, you get a commission of the total amount. amount. So let's say you book someone in and that person buys a $50,000 USD package, you get 5% of that, which would be 2,500 USD. So in short, we work with people to help them learn the skill, connect them with successful business owners after they learn the skill, and then make sure they can make anywhere between 5K to 10K per month. And literally, the only thing you need to make this happen is your laptop and Wi-Fi. That's all. Is this something you'd be interested in learning more about in terms of how this would work for you? George, you can you take, take a, a look at this. Hey, can you take yeah. a quick pause? Um, could you maybe also show and explain if where the setters work from? Because um, Right now, is that from many chats? Do you operate from many chat or is it desktop or phone? And then what it's, is it's the phone mainly? Yeah. And what, what is the dynamic between the setters? Because we've also tested four setters. We stopped that. Maybe like you can also cover what we recommend, uh, also why. And then you're saying phone. Okay. Uh, and then you can just touch on that. That'd be great. 
Yeah, yeah. So what we're doing, and this is a this is a good point, man. Thanks for bringing this up. Uh, we've tried with with many chat, and we're still using many chat for a few things. Uh, when it comes to like the CRM and tagging people and uh, and just like assigning people to a specific appointment center, just so like we have an overview of the pipeline in there. Uh, but mainly what we're doing is we're using IG mobile because the desktop version, just go on Instagram.com. It's pretty crappy. It crashes a lot. Chats are not loading up. Like it's just really bad. And what we found is on mobile, it works really, really well. One feature that Instagram just added, let me, let me pull it up and show you guys. Cause I also got, got word of this last night. What we're going to be able to do moving forward with a new IG update is let me see if I can find it real quick. Yeah, there you go. We're gonna be able to essentially have a CRM inside Instagram uh, with, with the labeling system. So if you look like right under that person's name, it says book. That's a default feature uh, from Instagram. And it looks like this, like there's, there's more labels in here, like you can flag them, you can label them as book and a few more things. Uh, and then you can also create your own labels. And what this means is like you can have your own CRM inside IG on your phone, which I think is very, very powerful and something that we've never had before. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that we're going to start using. And then the, the dynamics. So what we've tried um, a couple of weeks ago, and this is pretty much like the reason why our profile got taken down and banned. And then we were restricted from, from sending messages for seven days. We had four setters under one profile. And we had two of them working uh, during daytime and in Europe, Europe time zone, and then two of them working during nighttime and Europe time zone. And the problem with that was on a 24 hour basis, we just had too much activity. Like there was just, like the inbox was constantly active. We had like 20, 20 messages every like two minutes or three minutes, just constantly going out, constantly going out throughout the entire day with no breaks. And um, we've done that for a while. We got the account taken down for two days and uh, we got the account back up. We kept the same dynamic. And then two days later, we got banned from sending messages for seven days, meaning for seven days straight, nobody could work in the inbox. We could not send messages. Um, and we, we kind of learned it the hard way. We don't want you guys to go through that. And what we've realized is just because like based on the research that we've done, there was just like, too much activity we were probably pushing 1500 conversations a day which is like way too much obviously so you don't want to do that uh right now we only we we let go of two setters we have two two appointment setters in the main inbox both of them work similar time zones and the reason behind that is because most of the activity that we have in the inbox and like the, the golden hours so to say that we have are between 7 p.m. to to midnight Europe time zone. And then like there, that's like five hours or so of constant activity, like a lot of people getting back to us. And then after midnight, it just slowly starts um, becoming like less and less active. And like we have less and less people that are getting back to us. But that's kind of how it goes like from 7 p.m. to midnight, like that's when the peak is and it slowly starts dying off. Um, so even if it were that way, and even with like we, we, even with like the four setters and twenty four hour availability in the inbox, uh, a pair of setters like the nighttime setters or the daytime setters, based on like their their work schedules, they couldn't make the most out of the inbox just because nobody was getting back to them because the the people that we were talking with were just not active during those times. So that being said, uh, let me know if that clarifies. I suggest only having two setters max, two setters that like really really work and really put in the hours. Setters that we currently have on board, they work like 10 to 12 hours a day. Uh, they're, they're absolute beasts. So yeah, let, let me know if that clarifies. And Bass, if there's anything that, that you'd add to that. Yeah, perfect, man. And uh, maybe also valuable to cover would be how do they work officially on their phone? Because you have to like use your, like, you know, it's different in a keyboard. And is it like uh, four hours I don't know, phone with a keyboard in and like a couple hours desktop on many chat or what do, what would do the setters in general do? So the, the thing is, yeah, we do a bit of work in many chat. Like the main thing that we do with many chat is we do the follow-ups and like we have a better overview over the pipeline because we can have a tagging system and we can assign leads 
Um, but the, most of the activity happens on the phone. And w- for example, when it comes to outbound, we do it through the phone because like you cannot do outbound to many chat. You can do outbound through desktop, but it's like, once again, very, very crappy, uh, very, very slow. So yeah, most of the activity, I'd say like 80% of the activity happens through the phone. Uh, and then 20% of it happens to many chat. But once again, um, I like at this point, many chat is helpful for us just because we have like a lot, a lot of volume and we, we really got to a point where we have like tens of thousands of people in the inbox. Uh, but for beginning, I don't think there's, there's a need to add many chat because I, I, I just think that's in the early stages, extra complexity. Maybe once you get it, like once you have like two setters that are fully dialed in, they're working 10, 12 hours a day, you're just looking to add a little bit more efficiency in their workflow. I think that's when it would make sense to set up many chat. Um, if you're anywhere like below that or not at that point yet, I don't think many chat would be valuable just because there's still a lot of things like to maximize just from the IG inbox on the phone, um, just by being present there, just by, by, um, making the process more efficient in there. And what we have on IG mobile is something called saved replies. And if we tap that, then like you guys can see, there's a lot of like replies in here. Like you just stop them and you automatically have them there and you just press send. So this is how we're able to stay very, very efficient. And everything that I'm going to share with you guys that you see on my screen, like all those scripts in here, they are saved as quick replies. And the setter like just needs to tap that icon, tap the the piece of text that that they want to send over, and then boom, that's it. So it's very, very efficient. Once again, like the, the keyword here is efficiency and moving very, very fast. All right, now with this message, uh, circling back to, to this message where we explain about the opportunity, one thing that I wanna mention, which I think is gonna be valuable for everybody is when you're crafting this message for your own offer, uh, for your own business, just like always think, think about it this way. If I read this out to a five-year-old, would they understand it? And if the answer is yes, then you've done an incredible job and like you, you should keep that message. But if the answer is no, then just refine it and just dump it down literally just so everybody can understand it. Like it has to be dead simple. Um, just like this one, like this one is pretty straightforward. It's very, very simple. Uh, you're just going to exchange messages. Let's say you book someone in, they buy a 50 K package. You get 5%. That'll be 2,500. And literally the only thing you need to make this happen is your laptop and Wi-Fi. It's very, very straightforward, very smooth. Right. And when it's not cluttered, when it's very direct and it's very straightforward, easy to understand, what we've observed is like we have a lot of people that just say like to, to this last question, is this something you'd be interested in learning more about in terms of how this would work for you? We have a lot of people that just say, yeah, I'd love to learn more about it. Like if you get to this point, probably 95% of people, they're going to say yes to this last question. Of course, there's going to be people that say, no, uh, this doesn't sound like something that I want to do, which is fine. Like it's part of the game. But most people, when you have like a very clear explanation in place, um, they're going to say yes to it. And when they say yes, we just move on to the next step, which is proposing the call. And the way we do it is like, awesome. Do you think it would be helpful if we were to set up a call with my lead advisor and explore how becoming an appointment setter would look like for you specifically? And if it's the right vehicle for you to start making your first 5K to 10K per month online over the next two to three months or even less. And this is kind of how the flow goes. Like this is what happens with most of the conversation, like 95% of the conversations that leave that live in a first world country. This is the exact flow that they go through. So like, where do they live? Explaining the opportunity, proposing a call, and then it's all about putting them on a calendar and that's it. And this allows us to book like once again, 40 calls a day, 20 calls, 30 calls a day, just from one appointment center. But if they're from a third world country or if there are like some red flags in here, that you're not sure about, uh, what we do is just like, let's say they're from India. It's like, okay, awesome, man. So since you're from India, if you were to get into this opportunity, this would require multiple four-figure investment in USD. So let's say this would be something that fits specifically into what you're looking for with the help of your own capital, friends, family, banks, et cetera. Would you be able to invest into your own future if it's a good fit? And then if they say no, um, what we want to do and what we thought about doing, which has worked quite well, is just b- before letting them go, just exploring the reason because it's just like literally one message, like one copy paste message. of like, okay, I understand. 
say the reason behind that is because there's no trust yet and you're not familiar with how this works and what it entails? Or do you just not have the accessibility to, to that kind of capital because of where you live? And then if they don't have the accessibility, so we're at this stage right here, if they don't have the capital, then we just send them to the Facebook group in a nice way. But if it's more so about the trust and like they don't know how it works, then we move on to explain how it works and what it is. And if they say like that they're interested, then we're still going to put them on a call and we're going to propose a call here. And that's kind of how the whole process works. Again, if it so happens that here, like they say, no, I'm not interested. This doesn't sound like something uh, worth exploring for me. Uh, once again, we just for feedback purposes, we explore the reason of like, oh, I see. Is it because the way I explained it or is it something that just doesn't really align with you? And if so, why does it not align with you? And the reason we do this is it's, it's overall hope. Like, for example, we have uh, we have a day where we get a lot of shout outs going and a lot of the people that, that we're talking with, they're going to say, no, like, I'm not interested. This doesn't sound like something worth exploring for me. Um, we just collect the feedback and then we know, like, cool, those are the pages. Like, it, it's just mainly like for, for marketing purposes. And then also just being able to kind of like have a clear overview of like, cool, X amount of people, they're going to say yes. And then we have X amount of people that, that they're just going to say no, which is fine. Um, so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of how it works. I see two people with their hands uh, raised. I see Chad and Leo. Uh, do you have any quick questions, guys, or like anything that you want to add here? So just, just with the flow that you were going uh, over just before, is there a reason why you guys put them on the triage so quickly? So kind of like in the port in the past, but we what, what I do is like we get like what's your desired situation, what's kind of preventing you to get there. Um, is there a reason why you go so quickly just to proposing the call? Yeah, yeah, because we get the, the thing is um when we were in, in the early stages with the shout outs and we weren't getting like the, the amount of volume that we're getting right now, we had a more complex like a longer process in place where we also want to like desire situation roadblocks yeah. uh, mm -hmm. current situation like everything that comes with that just to maximize on the opportunity of every person that comes in the inbox just because we had the time to do it right because mm -hmm. we weren't like jam-packed with, with thousands of leads on a daily basis but the yeah. reason we have it this way right now is once again for the sake of efficiency if we have an eight step 12 step process in place where we go to like current situation desired situation roadblocks this that confirming blah 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 like everything that happens on Facebook, um, we're just not going to be efficient. We're just not going to book as many calls at the end of the day. And we would much rather have like a, a more, way more efficient process in place, just like this one that allows us to get 40 bookings when we have like a lot, a lot of traffic, a lot of inbound people, like a lot of inbound leads that, that come our way rather than just stay them through the process and just extend it out, like drag it out. Yeah. Uh, that's the reason why. Let me know if that clarifies. Yep. So, so um, would you kind of advise if we're not up to as high um, lead flow and stuff, still sticking with the current situation, desired situation roadblocks? Do you still advise that or? Um... Yeah. Yeah. I would test it out. Like I would test it out both ways. Um, but yeah, mainly like if you don't have a lot of lead flow uh, coming through from the shout outs, then uh, yeah, I would, I would just make the appointment setting process just a bit longer where you build a bit more leverage. leverage. Just maybe even like have it just like this, but add an extra step where you talk about their goals and then propose a call because mm -hmm. that's going to give you more leverage and that's going to make them like a bit more inclined to actually jump on the call. I think that could be helpful when you're dealing with less volume. Um, so yeah, I know that clarifies. Yeah, make, makes sense. Cool, cool. Hey, Chad, we, we can't hear you. I see you talking, but we cannot hear you. Yeah, sorry about that. I, my mic okay, is off. There okay. we go. Um, you mentioned about the tagging. And um, is that IG? You said IG mobile. Is that? And you also said mini chat. So is that mini chat or is that IG mobile? How are you doing the tagging? No, it's, it's IG. Responses? It's just IG. Really? It's, it's the classic Instagram app. Yeah, they, they just they just give it an update um, oh, sure. the other day. So, so yeah. How, how do I find the mobile app? I don't have my mobile with me, but um, how do you find that then when you go into uh, Instagram? Yeah, it's just going to be like, do you see that little flag up there? That's yeah. what it's going to be. It's just oh, going to be a, a different icon. Yeah, on my end, yeah. it's not updated yet, but it's just going to be a little icon there. Um, and that that's how you use it. And then also the um, the canned responses you were showing, how, are those also part of that then? Uh, yeah, it's also part of IG. 
Like if you go in the IG inbox on your phone, and if you click uh -huh. that little plus icon there uh -huh. um, in the bottom right hand corner, then you're going to see like save replays. And this is like literally the IG native app for mobile. Okay. But save the, the, replays, boom. And they don't have that on the Facebook stuff. app yet though, right? No, they don't have it on Facebook, no. Okay. Um, the other question is, did I, I got here a little bit late. Did you happen to share this document or is this something you're going to share with us? It's something that we're going to share with you. Absolutely. Okay, cool. At the end of the call. All right. All right awesome. Cool. Cool. That's all absolutely. I had. Absolutely. You're welcome. Now, guys, moving forward with the daily workflow and, and the KPIs, one thing that I want to mention before just diving into it and walking you through the workflow is even when you get a lot of inbound, it's important to not let your setters only rely on inbound. Because there's plenty of opportunity outside outside the inbox with people that like recently started to follow you, people that watch your stories, people like that like and comment on your posts. And by by letting your setter only take care of like the inbound traffic, it, it can create this culture of like, cool, I'm just gonna wait for inbound. If I don't have inbound, then I, I don't have any work to do. And that's not true. And the reality is there's plenty of work to do. As long as you're getting followers, as long as you're getting eyeballs onto your profile, there's plenty of work to do. So make sure this is being leveraged on a daily basis. And besides the inbound traffic that comes to your inbox, which is, of course, the number one priority, your setter is still initiating new convos with people that are not inbound, that are not reaching out to you, that are not replying to a CDA. And the reason is, like, th this is just how you build healthy momentum and a healthy pipeline that's not only reliant on the efforts of the marketing department and that being said i'm going to walk you through through the workflow before you continue yes. um because you're covering a lot it's really valuable does anyone have any questions on the first phase of what george just covered which is the setting framework if you do just drop a one in the chat and if no one drops a comment in the next 10 seconds then you can continue with uh the daily work on kpis cool 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 Let's go ahead. All right, amazing. Um, cool. So the first thing, of course, when uh, we have the setters jump in the inbox, the first thing is filling the inbox. Uh, the way we do it is we have them go three to four days back and just scroll down like crazy and make sure everyone is responded to. Uh, we don't use Creator Studio. We don't use um, many chat. We only use the IG mobile app because um, the other ones can can get like uh, buggy, they can lag behind, we don't want that. Like we, we wanna move fast, right? So what we found, IG Mobile app is the best with the tagging system, I think that's, that's just gonna make it so much more easier overall. Now the second task of the workflow is just taking care of inbound. So there, if there's any message requests, if there's any poll votes, if there's any like CTA replies, um, of course, this is the, the first priority when, when they finish cleaning the inbox, it's just getting back to everybody that's interested in proposing a call to these people. Then the third one is call reminders, which happened one day before and on the day of the call. And the way it works is the first message that we sent, which is the day before, hey, name, just thought I would check in with you and make sure you're all set for the call tomorrow. And then the second one, which is on the day of the call is, hey, name, do you have the Zoom link for the call today? If not, I'm happy to go grab that for you. And the reason we do it this way is because some people, they think it's a phone call. Um, some people, they think somebody's gonna call them up. So we just wanna bring it into their awareness that this is gonna be a Zoom call. And we just ask them if they have the Zoom link. Most of the people, they say they have the Zoom link and they're gonna join, but there are some, some people that say, hey, I just thought it's, it's a phone call. Yeah, can you send me the Zoom link? And then if we didn't do this, or if we didn't ask the question this way, then they, they would have probably been a no-show. They would have waited for a call that they, they would have never gotten. So yeah, there's the first, or like not the first one, but the third uh, task in the workflow. Then the fourth one is PCFU, which stands for post call follow-up with people that had a call within the last seven days, but never bought. And what we wanna do here, and this works incredibly well if you have closers, is just a casual con conversation to see where they're at. Like, hey name, how was your call with Cameron? is what we would ask somebody in the inbox. Um, and then the person would be like, hey, Bastian, it was good. Cameron is a really nice guy. And then another question, like another very casual question. I was like, awesome, happy to hear that. What did you guys end up concluding? And then this question, um, I would say is probably like the most powerful question that, that 
that I've ever asked in the inbox or like that our setters are asking because this uncovers um, so many hidden objections or so many things that, that people sometimes just, just don't share with the closers um, or some things that, that maybe came up in the meantime. Um, so the response that we're going to get here, if, if a person never closed on the call, is going to be like, uh, yeah, well, you know, Cameron's a great guy, but I just don't feel like I'm ready now. Or like, I just don't have uh, the finances or like, I'm, I'm really unsure how this process is going to work for me. Or like, can you give me more details about the guarantee? Or can you do more of this? Or can you do more of that? And then like by asking this question, we're going to uncover some sort of objection, some sort of like, like logistical issue. Maybe there's like, maybe there's self-doubt. Maybe they're afraid to take the risk. Maybe they think now is not the right time. Like whatever objection, right? Um, and then once we have that, we can address it and we can handle it, if anything. Or maybe they're just going to say like, yeah, I had an, had an amazing call with Cameron. I'm going to join in in two days from now. I'm just arranging the funds. And it's like that. It's cool. Amazing. Thank you for the update. Let me know if there's anything that I can I can help you with in the meantime. That's kind of what we're doing here. Uh, and the fifth one is following up with people that we propose the call to. So I like to call those CPP and then SC, which stands for send calendar, right? And what you can do, you can flag these people in the IG inbox on mobile, so that when you scroll, you're going to see that little flag there or the new tagging system that, that I just talked about. You're going to see the label, which is once again going to be very, very powerful. Um, the reason we want to follow up with those people is Let's say on a daily basis, you're proposing like 20 calls and you have 12 people that get back to you agreeing to the call and then eight people, they never get back to you, right? So out of the 12 people, let's say you're going to put 10 of them on a call. There's going to be two people that are left with a sent calendar, but they never book in. So by us following up with like the other eight people that we propose the call to the following day, by following up with the people that we send a booking link to, same thing, the following day, we're going to get another like four or five bookings just out of that that we would have like otherwise never gotten. <clears throat> so this is the, this is the fifth thing um, in the workflow now moving forward. Sixth thing, uh, we're just doing follow-ups from hottest to coldest, which is mainly um, just scrolling down in the inbox and taking a look at the convos, if there's any like hot leads that they remember, because usually when you're just sitting and when you're in the inbox and when you get familiar with everything, you start remembering names, you start remembering faces, like you know what, where people are at. So this is gonna make it easy to just follow up from hottest to coldest, just to prioritize the order that way. And then one quick note that I wanna make here um, around advancing conversations, right? While you have your setter doing, doing follow-ups, right? Going from, from hottest to coldest, just have them pay attention to the people that get back to them and have them stop the follow-ups if somebody gets back to them. And just focus on advancing that conversation and potentially booking that person in for a call. And then, and only after that, just having them get back to the follow-ups. When I was in the inbox, and when we have like the, the setters that we have right now in the inbox, this is by far the highest leverage activity that an employment setter can do when they're in the inbox. The reason behind it is very simple. Like, let's just say, when you, like, if you were to follow up with 100 people, then you might get a few people that get back to you. You might get one or two bookings out of that, which would happen anyways, because you're doing follow-ups. It's not a time-sensitive task when you're doing follow-ups. You can do follow-ups now or you can do it one hour later. It's still going to get you the same result. It's still going to get you the same reply from that person. But while you're doing follow-ups or while you're doing another, another task when you're in the inbox and somebody gets back to you and they're active and they're online and they're engaged, you want to stop everything that you're doing. You want to put all of your energy into that person and just focusing on that person because number one, they're active. They just got back to you and you might as well spend the next 5, 10, 15 minutes having a back and forth with them and putting them on a call or not even like five, 10, 15 minutes. It may, it's probably even like two, three minutes to put them on a call and make sure that they book in. Like that's by far the highest leverage activity that you can do. Because otherwise, if you like, let's say you're doing follow-ups, you're blasting through hundred people, halfway through, you have some people that start getting back to you. And then you get back to them 30 minutes later, once you've finished doing the follow-ups, the problem with that is like all those four or five people that got back to you during that time, now they're not active anymore. And now you're going to send them a message and you're going to have to wait another 12, 16, 18 hours for them to get back to you. So this is why we always want to focus on active conversation. And then number seven is something that, that pretty much happens um, 
within the other within the other steps of the workflow, right? So you want to have your setter combine this with the other steps of the workflow. It's something that I just mentioned before, talking about a workflow, um, just to build a healthy pipeline and healthy momentum. It's uh, it's about outbound and putting new people in the inbox, right? So for example, you finish clearing the inbox, you put 20, 25 new people in the inbox from new followers, from people that like the post, from people that, that engage with the post, from people that comment, from people that view the story, so on and so forth. And then you finish doing follow-ups and you like you finish doing post call follow-ups. You do another 20 to 25 outbound. And then you finish following up with the hottest leads. You do another and so on and so forth until they hit KPIs. Because cool, they're very nice when you have a lot of inbound, but there's going to be days when the inbound is going to fluctuate. And then the only way to, to keep that momentum going and to feed that momentum and to make sure you're constant and you're like, you're always going to get the results that you're after is constantly doing one, like just doing the boring stuff, just doing the album, just putting new people in the emails. Because at the end of the day, it's just a numbers game. That's what it is. Right? And the more consistency we can have, the better results we're going to get. Right. And then, of course, the last one is before they sign off, clearing the inbox, just going two to three days back making sure everybody's responded to. This is gonna be the last task of the day. And then once this is cleared out, they can sign off, they can enjoy the rest of their evening or morning, uh, depending on uh, on what times they work. Now, a quick suggestion before I move on to the KVIs is every time the inbox is, is more dry or they're like, there are not many shout outs going off and you need activity, um, just go hit post-call follow-up. Like have your setter go hit post-call follow-ups and have them go like 30, 60, 90 days back and have them do this like once or twice a month based on the activity that you have in the inbox. Because there's going to be days, especially like Saturdays, for example, uh, when I was doing appointments, and like for us, Saturdays were like really slow days most of the times. And what I would do is just double down on follow-ups so I could build momentum over the weekend. And on Monday, I would book 12 minutes, 14 minutes, 20 minutes like every single Monday, just because of the work that I put in on that Saturday and just because I chose to like go three months back and follow up with every person that had a call but never bought. And that's a fun fact. Uh, even to this day, like over at, over at Millionaire Consulting, we get a lot of our like monthly revenue, like monthly new cash that comes in the business. It just comes from post-call follow-ups and following up with people that had a call but never bought. And same thing over at appointmentsstore.com. We had a lot of people over the last month, which was our best month, that came in just because of a post call follow. They had a call maybe a month ago, maybe three weeks ago. They just weren't in a position to buy. But now we follow up. They've saved up some money. Maybe they got a loan. Maybe they got approved by the bank. Maybe they borrowed money from a friend or a family member. And now they're ready to sign up. And if we, if we wouldn't have followed up, then we, we wouldn't have gotten that deal. So this is why we're we're so so big on follow-ups. Now moving forward, and actually before I move forward, if anybody has any questions, just uh, just drop a one in the chat, and um, I'm gonna help you guys. All right, Carlos. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, Carlos, brother. what do you have for me? Hey, 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 hey brother. Um, I was wondering, do you guys still do let's say outbound? Um, besides the people that are following you, so let's say you're going to another page, still reaching out to people. No. no? No, we don't do it just because the, the thing is like when we're like with the shadows that we're running now, we get like 50,000 new followers every month. Mm. And then we, like we, we cannot put 50,000 new people um, in the inbox per month. Like IG is not going to allow us to do it. So we have mm -hmm. plenty of people to reach out to within our follower base. Um, so we don't need to go into like different pages. A Facebook uh, neither? Facebook neither. No, we get mainly like all the traffic that we get on Facebook is from, from group requests. Like that's where all the new convos come from. Okay, got it. Thanks, man. Cool, cool. Cool, cool. Who else? Listen, what do you have for me, brother? Yes, George, good to see hey, you again, bro. Good to see you. Yeah, bro. So a little question, bro. We wanted uh, to switch our IG account uh, to IG business, to a business profile. But when we do it, we get an uh, uh, error. It doesn't switch. Do you maybe know a way how we can contact IG, Instagram? I'm not sure. I know there must be a way to send them a support ticket. But other than that, we've never faced this issue. Um, I don't have a, a business account, like personally. But I know Bastion, like all the accounts that we have, they're, they're business accounts on IG. I'm not sure what the procedure is around that. 
uh maybe maybe bass like if you if you have any insights or like some some clarity around this specific topic and what specific personally i'm just yeah, yeah. So yeah, we, we already uh, discussed it. It's like uh, we wanted to switch our IG account, uh, account to a business profile. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can also have the flags. Uh, you have you can have the primary and general page for two setters. Uh, but when we want to switch, we get the error. It, it doesn't switch at our profile. Maybe do you? Not, uh, I'm. I was just wondering, wondering from guys, do you maybe know a way how we can contact Instagram? um to be honest i don't man i think the best thing you can do is to go like to the support inbox and submit a ticket um and just try that first if that doesn't work i can actually connect you with someone that always helps me get unbent um but i would just try to keep it simple first and submit a ticket that's what i would do sweet okay Th thank you boys thank you of course oh, cool <laughs> you're welcome now let's move forward to the KPIs and this is pretty straightforward. So, uh, and this is also going to be um, adjustable based on like the lead flow that you have and the amount of opportunity that you've built in the inbox. Um, but as, as a rule of thumb, right, what we have our sellers aim for on a daily basis is anywhere between 50 to 100 new combos, anywhere between 150 to 200 follow ups, anywhere between 10 to 30 calls proposed, and anywhere between 6 to 15 calls booked. Um, this is kind of what, what we aim for. And this is pretty straightforward. Now, does everybody, does everyone have any questions around, around the KPIs? If you do just drop me a one in the chat. Uh, cause those are like some, some pretty straightforward numbers here. Not, nothing much to talk about when it comes to the KPIs. Are we all good? I think we're all good. All right. Beautiful. Now, the last thing that I'm going to cover is the management SOP and what I'm doing on a daily basis with, with the appointment setters and like with the team of setters that we have on board, right? And as a manager and, and leader, there are some non-negotiable things that you need to do for your team on a daily basis. Uh, and this is what we've seen works best for our team and gets them to perform to the highest possible level. So number one, of course, is accountability. Like just having that, that top of mind, um, priority of like always thinking like um are they on track are they off track if they're all off track why is that like just always having that critical thinking of like is my setter performing well of course you don't want to micromanage them because that's going to like piss off most of the a players that you're going to work with but you always want to have that like proactive thinking of is is my setter on track are they doing good if not what can i do to help them right um, are they getting their workflow done every single day? If not, why is that? Like if they don't manage to go through all the, the things in the workflow, then maybe it's an efficiency issue, right? Maybe they're not efficient enough. Maybe they don't have the shortcut set up. Maybe they don't understand one thing. So just, like communication is key. When it comes to accountability, communication is key. If you see something that, that's not being done the way you want it to be done, just communicate it, see the reason behind it. And then if it makes sense, like, of course, help them. If it doesn't make sense, just, just call them out. Um, like, again, like, do they show up daily? Uh, are they on time? Do they put in the work? Do they put in the hours? Or they, do, do they just come up with excuses and avoid the work? If so, is it because uh, of something personal that's happening in their life? Or is it something work-related? They don't, they don't enjoy the environment. The communication between the, the department and the business is not good enough. They don't feel motivated. They don't know how to do it. They don't feel good enough. Like, what is it, you know? Uh, you, you always want to explore this with your setters. Uh, and then do they, do they take action? Like, are they decisive? Do they implement the feedback right away? When I ask them to do something, do they actually go ahead and do it? Uh, when I tell them that, that we have like stories that are live or, or comments that are coming through, like, do they actually take action? Do they go and do it? Um, th those are, those are kind of like the main things that we're looking at when it comes to accountability. And once again, the key thing here is like communication. When you see this happen once, just communicate. It's like, hey, man, look, um, I just noticed that the, the other day you didn't get your workflow done, like, entirely. And I was just wondering, like, do you feel there's anything that's missing? Like, just always, always communicate it and communicate it in a nice way without pointing the finger. Just, like, try to understand them first and then find a solution together. That's why I've seen it works best. And then the second thing, which is, Constantly giving feedback, like constantly checking the inboxes, constantly checking the activity, the pace, 
and giving feedback. And what I mean by that is like three times a day, morning, afternoon, and evening, um, I would just go in and just check the inboxes. And if the pace is off, like if they're not pushing in on volume, I'm going to mention like, hey guys, what's up? Like, what's happening? Is everything cool? Like if, if they're not really active, I see like four hours of them not being active. Like, hey man, look, I see like the last four hours, you, you ghosted the inbox, like you didn't do anything. Uh, what's happening there? And uh, same thing, like just if I see, if I see something weird in the inbox, if I see like a weird reply, or if I see they're, they're saying something rude to a person in the inbox, which like by default is gonna happen because uh, you're never gonna get like the, the perfect appointment setter. Uh, just check the inbox, right? Just like go in there, take a screenshot. Like, like hey man, look, like I, w- when you're saying this, this is how it comes off across. Like just stop saying this. And this is a better way to say it. And it's a better way because X, Y, and Z, it just makes the prospect feel like you really, like you really care about them rather than making them feel like you, you only want to get a sale. It's just like so on and so forth, just being proactive with the feedback. This is by far, this giving feedback is by far the number one thing that's helped our setters get to like where they're at right now. If there's one thing uh, above everything else, that's just daily feedback from someone that's done it and somebody that has experience, right? Another thing that I would do is in the morning, just shoot feedback videos once a day for each setter going through the convos and troubleshooting and giving suggestions and hoping with advancing the conversation or handling objections, right? And <clears throat> the way I do it is like, it's just a simple like five to 10 minute video. Loom video, I just click record, jump in the inbox, pick some random convos and like, cool, this is what you did great. Uh, this is where you fucked up. This is why you fucked up. This is how you can improve it. And this is the reason why you want to improve it. And this is the outcome that you're going to get if you improve it. That's kind of what we're doing. Or if the pacing is off, and I see like, I scroll down and I see like over the last 24 hours, you didn't have a lot of convos. I'm going to call down like, hey man, look, I'm observing this. What's happened? Let me know. Because like, this is not good. And then it just makes them like very, very efficient for both parties. It's literally five, six, 10 minute video. They can quickly go through it at the very beginning of my, of their day. I can shoot it in the beginning of my day. Now, like this way, I know I keep them accountable on a daily basis outside of the daily 30 minute meeting, which is the last thing that, that we're doing in terms of like, uh, accountability and feedback is those two kind of go hand in hand. So the last thing daily 30 minute meeting with a setter team where we cover projections, which is like the goal of the week. Are they on track? Are they off track? If they're off track, what's the reason behind that? Like, what can we do to get them back on track? Like, do we need to set a new goal? Do we need to lower the current goal that we have? Just take a look at that. Like this usually takes five minutes or less. If there's any announcements, I'm just going to let them know about the announcements. And then once again, like this is literally the best thing that we can do is just jump in the inbox, pick some random people. Or if they have some people that that they already like have noted down and they want me to go through those convos with them, um, we, we just jump in the inbox go to those people and give them actionable feedback based on that, right? With like objection handling, advancing the convo, following up. Maybe the prospect asks a weird question that they never got before. I'm going to help them handle it. I'm going to help them answer it. And that's kind of what we do on on the management side. And we've seen this works very, very well when when done consistently consistently on a daily basis. And that's, that's mainly about it when it comes to, to the entire appointment setting department. Thanks, George. This was awesome, brother. Um, does anyone have any questions for George? And um, if you don't have any questions, that's cool. If you do, just drop a one in the chat. And also your takeaways, share your biggest takeaway in the chat that you've got from George's presentation. Okay, Gabo, go ahead. And uh, George, I'll let you take the word. Yep. Hey guys, hi Bas. How are you doing? Hey, guys? hey. Good. Thank you for the, the great value today. So um, I have just one question. So um, how do you guys uh, handle the shot out? Uh, I mean, uh, in Italy, for example, um, they are often done on a meme page or a crap page where the audience is very broad. Okay, so my question is, how do you handle this process? Do you use uh, only business page or do you also use broad page uh, and if yes how many no we only use the main account like we we send all the traffic to the main account 
I'm not sure about the pages that we're using because those are like also pages with more so like general public. It's not very niche down, of course, like people that are interested in okay. entrepreneurship and uh-huh. self-development, but we send all of the traffic to one account. Yeah, That's okay, but, 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 but the, uh, the shout out uh, comes from, uh, for example, our um, business page, for example, motivational page, mindset page, I just drop some examples or also uh meme page or funny page yeah yeah like uh the the best ones like the, the best ones surprisingly are meme pages that work really well um, okay we also use stoic pages so like you uh-huh. know with stoic kind of stuff like philosophy um masculine pages also work really really well mm-hmm. and then just kind of like the general motivation entrepreneur pages work really well too but the on tap uh-huh. ones is where you want to be at because you know, everyone uses entrepreneur pages. Everyone uses motivational pages. So like yeah. if you can find teams, um, then you're going to be able to tap into an audience that no other person in the industry has yet. So I'd know down some teams, Gabo, because you're in Italy, actually. Um, yeah. Got like 20, 30 pages I can share with you because I okay. have another client ready. So just message me in the Slack and then I can send it your way as well. Perfect. Amazing. Thank you so much. No worries. Awesome. Okay. Anyone else has uh, any questions for Mr. George about appointment setting before we move to, uh, to the triage and sales process? <clears throat> Christine, I see a question, uh, I see a question from you. So like, how do you handle conversations on different platforms with different setters, but same prospect? Um, it's pretty straightforward. So like what was going to happen if we have like, for example, let's say you have Facebook and IG and you have one setter on Facebook that's talking with John and the same setter on IG that's talking with the same John right? Uh, that John prospect, they're going to be like, hey, Bass, but I'm also talking with you on IG. Or they're going to be like, hey, but you just messaged me about this on IG. Or like, hey, but we were talking about this on IG the other day. And then the Facebook setter is just say, cool, man, let's just keep our convo on IG and just let the IG setter handle it. Or if the IG setter gets somebody um, in their inbox that's like, hey, Bass, but we've been talking on, on Facebook this week uh, or like last week about this, blah, blah, blah. Then the IG setter is going to be like, cool, man, let's keep our convo on Facebook and just passes uh, passes them down to the Facebook setter and lets them handle it. That's that's kind of how we do it. Um, Carlos, I see a one in the chat here. What do you have for me? Yes. So, yeah, very short question. Um, I was just wondering, as you guys have like two setters on uh, Instagram, for example, four, um, how do you, uh, for example, structure that in terms of, you know, one can take the other one set, for example? You know what I mean? they have their own leads and one, one setter works in the primary inbox and the other setter works in the general inbox. That's how we do it. Also with the, for example, one working from the U S and other one from let's say yeah. Europe. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, they, they would have their own inbox. Like one of them would have primary and then the other one would have general. That's Perfect. how we do it. Perfect. Cool. Cool. And then Daphne, are the labels available on every IEG right now? Not sure. I have some people that they can see it uh, that I've talked with. And then some people, they can't see it. Me personally, I don't have it, but it's just an IG update. So it's probably going to come within the next few days if it's not already on your phone, like fully updated. And you can also look into like the app store and see if there's any updates that you can make uh, for IG. Awesome. George, can you also share this document? in the Zoom chat and make it uh, yep. accessible with uh, the share option. Absolutely. 